Welcome to another episode of Stockport Grammar School Talk Sport. Uh, today, we've got a bloke who is really passionate about geography, and I had the pleasure of working with him at KCS, and we spent many an afternoon on the Kingsway for sports fields. His other uh, passion is hockey. Um, he's currently playing for Hampstead and Westminster. He's got 74 international caps for Wales, 13 for Team GB, scoring 13 goals along the way. He has got the best goal scoring celebration in the business and overall top bloke. Um, welcome to Stockport Grammar School Talk Sport, Rupert Shickley. Hello, I'm excited to be here. <laughs> yeah, top man. Well, thank you for your time, pal. Um, so, yeah, so first, first question then is if you just want to just talk to the listeners a little bit about your journey um, and where you are today. Um, well, I've had a bit of a roundabout journey to where I am. I probably haven't gone down the. Uh, the normal route that most international athletes would have gone down. Um, quick, brief history of what I was. Um, at school, I played all sports, used to love tennis, love football, um, always outside. Didn't too much <laughs> for my school work when I was about the age of 10. Um, that soon changed though. When I was fortunate, um, fortunate enough to go to um, uh, a nice big boarding school where they had loads of fields. So sport flourished there but um i then did grow up a little bit and worked hard um but i was playing mainly rugby back then i played rugby um county level got into a few uh, academies so i was about 18 um and then i was always playing hockey i did love it um, but all my mates played rugby so i played rugby basically and it's kind of the same same reason why i'm where I am today, I went to university, um, found a group of mates, all played hockey. Um, so I joined the hockey club. Um, I was fortunate, fortunate enough that I was physically quicker, fitter than most people. My hockey ability wasn't quite as good as everyone else. Um, so it's kind of just been, um, that allowed me then to, to get into the Welsh setup where I've been now for almost eight years yeah. um, then graduated from Cardiff University uh, with a 2-1 in geography got a, a teaching job um, mm -hmm. in Royal Grammar School of Guildford where I was there for a couple of years playing my hockey at Surbiton yeah. um, before my current coach now Quan Brown who's, who's a legend um, the hockey world will know Quan Brown um, convinced me to go to Hampstead and Westminster um, and at a similar time I went to KCS Wimbledon where I met a few average blokes um, some somehow we let the northerners in <laughs> but um, no and then and then last year almost two years ago I made the, the decision to um, stop my job and pursue hockey full-time um, made it into the the GB squad, um, and that's where I am now on my on my road, hopefully to Tokyo, which has taken a few roundabout turns and been a bit longer than expected, but I'm still here. Yeah, no, amazing journey so far, and hopefully just at the beginning. Um, and just to touch upon that that decision you made there, obviously to step out of the, the comfort blanket of I guess the job, and then go for that big dream. What what was going through your head there? Um, it was a weird one because I just got a, a promotion as well to assistant head of house, which I really wanted to do. Um, and then, yeah, I had a phone call with a GB coach. And we'd had chats before um, and it was kind of like a, a now or never moment. Yeah. I, cheekily, I thought, I could could I get into the, the squad for the Olympics in, in a year? Yeah. Um, it'd be a blind if I had a job, left it, played the Olympics, went back and everything would be, be perfect but obviously it didn't quite go that way um had to leave my job in the end um i was pretty much unemployed for um almost two months um because i was on trial for gb and and then they give you a contract if they if they want you so i guess it was just a calculated risk gambled yeah. backed myself um worked hard um and then it's kind of like this, and we, I've talked to it today as well, we can speak about later, this samurai thinking yeah. that I'm a big believer in. It's like, whatever happens tomorrow happens tomorrow, deal with it today. So, yeah, um, yeah lucky it paid off. 
No, amazing, and that's a dream big, and just don't live with any regrets, which is, that's the key. Yeah, message. basically. Oh, awesome. Um, and then, obviously, talking about you were a late developer, I guess, to hockey, and you went on to represent Wales. What what did that feel like when the, you first stepped onto that pitch and put that Welsh shirt on, and uh, what was that, what was going through your head then? Um, I remember we were in Spain, in Barcelona. Um, I must have been, I think I was 20, stood next to... Uh, my old history teacher, <laughs> who was also in the team, um, I, w I was so nervous. I honestly probably one of the worst games of hockey I've played. Um, I, yeah, just the a bit of the crowd, just the the emotions, nerves, and I'm not really a nervous person. Yeah. Um, it's just it was just so different to all the club hockey I've played. Um, yeah, there's nothing quite like it. Um, but then, yeah, 74 caps in. Um, you still get those uh, emotions in the in the uh, in the anthems, but oh, I just I love it now. I absolutely love it. Yeah, amazing. And obviously, then you took that next step, which we talked about a little bit earlier, to GB, which is what an achievement that is. Um, again, what was was the nerve? Were the nerves still there for the GB uh, first appearance? Um, a little, kind of, just because we we're playing Australia who yeah. were number one in the world at the time in Australia. I think it was 42 degrees or something. Um, I think, yeah, the, by that stage, I got used to the international stage. Um, and But it was another step up, another yeah. step up. So first five minutes, but then you get a few touches on the ball and then you remember it's just a, a game of hockey against some blokes who are probably in the same situation as you are. Yeah, no, definitely. And then talk me through, Roop, the goal celebration, Commonwealth Games versus Pakistan. Yeah. Uh, so, um, <laughs> as long, uh, I'll narrow it down. So, we got to the village about a week early, um, and we're in these apartments, and there's, there's four of us in there. Um, and there's only so much you can, you can do. So, we're entertaining ourselves, and we're watching um, um, Napoleon Dynamite. And basically, the... the the celebration is from Napoleon Dynamite, um, and we kind of made this joke: whoever scores first has to has to do the celebration. Yeah. And uh, one of the guys in the flat broke his hand in the warm-up game, which was gutting. So we sat in the stand watching. Um, scored. I mean, the emotion of scoring in front of it. I think there was about fourteen, fifteen thousand people there. Turn around, and I just saw him giving it, giving it this one in the crowd. So. <laughs> So I did it, and I've never and oh the amount of stick I've got for it now. Looking back, it's I don't regret it, but it is embarrassing. No, definitely, you need to bring that back in Tokyo when when you get back. Oh, absolutely, awesome, good stuff. And then something we're touching upon uh, on this series is a little bit about high performance, high performance mindset. What what <laughs> what would you say high performance is to you? Um, it's all about uh, like s small margins. Mm -hmm. um, trying to trying to better yourself every single day, um, and that comes from discipline um, and just having uh, the belief and, like you said, having the right mindset to to know you you're going to have bad days, but you you've got a, a goal, an achievable goal, um, and then if you if you want to put it in a s sports context, like the, the the margins we're trying to. Well, as a hockey player, it's less than other sports. But like, I'm as a forward midfielder, it I might get one or two chances a game instead of if I was playing club hockey compared to international, I might get four or five. So yeah. it's being able to take those um, chances when they come, whilst under pressure. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess the, the mindset thing is, um, can you perform uh, under pressure? And the big stage, and the the one I love is uh, the cricket World Cup when England won, and it was the commentary. It's like by the barest of margins, yeah, and it is yeah. literally like if the the fielder fumbled it, didn't get it in, they wouldn't have won. Um, if like Butler didn't take the stumps off quick enough, they wouldn't have won. So it's like everyone, a group, all on peak, um, but that comes from hard work. Yeah, that's been done three, four years down the line. To, yeah. for literally what is one or two seconds of magic. Um, obviously, on your journey, you've had ups and downs and, and setbacks. Um, mm. 
can you give any examples of, of setbacks you've had and how did you overcome them? Um, uh, I've, I've missed tournaments just literally through injury like mm-hmm. a couple of weeks before, um, uh, which, which is gutting, like big tournaments like Europeans. Yeah. Um, I've missed out on selection, those sort of things. Um, even times this year when I've, I like questioned a little bit my decisions with um, well, obviously the laying of the Olympics. We've had yeah. about twenty games cancelled already, um, and like obviously in the grand scheme of things, it's not a big setback. But if you, if you do think about it, it's setbacks, mm. and I'm quite fortunate in the in the fact that before coming into hockey, I had lots of other hobbies, had yeah. other things in my social life and that's really helped me so yeah. um golf being one of them like in the first lockdown completely switched off um almost forgot about it for a few weeks picked something else up where i could really throw my mind into it um then like having a group, good group of mates is obviously really important um and then more recently just working with psychologists and, and being able to actually um, switch on and switch off is mm-hmm. so important. So you go to training, you, you, you have a bad day, and then you come home and you're really frustrated. Like, how do you switch off for that? So yeah. then you don't put all that negative energy onto to other people. Um, so that's something I've been working pretty hard on. Yeah. Um, but honestly, I think this, the saviour is having other things in, in your life, having a balance to, to your to your career and, and your and your social side. Yeah, no, definitely. And then just touching on a little bit of that, because obviously you're in this situation about Tokyo Olympics. We're uncertain if it's going to go ahead. Uh, GCSE and A-levels at the moment, obviously some students with IGCSE, it's still going ahead, it might not go ahead. Have you got any advice you could maybe pass on or something that's going through your mind to students of how you're going to plan for the uncertainty? Yeah, we, uh, we talk a lot about being flexible, adaptability, yeah. um, and take every day as it comes. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, just almost like prepare for tomorrow because no one knows what's going to happen. Live yeah. today is, is kind of is, and it? it sounds a bit cliche, but that's yeah. what you can do at the moment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the adaptability is, is a big one. Um, like, for example, if for, for pupils now, being able to work on zoom yeah. online is being able to adapt to that in the classroom and how how well you take to that is how successful you're going to be really mm. um and it's kind of like still throwing you throwing everything at it um but obviously it's not going to be perfect but yeah just being able to be flexible um and deal with issues when they, when they come yeah no good and then on, on the flip side from setbacks, and you've had many accomplishments and the greatest accomplishment will come in Tokyo at some point when you get that gold medal around yeah, your neck. Absolutely, um, yeah. But at the moment, what are you most proud of presently and, and why? Um, I've got a few mm-hmm. um, for, for different reasons. One of them that always sticks to me is actually when, when I was at school. Um, it was like, I think it was I was in upper sixth playing rugby against uh, one of our rival schools, went down to the last minute yeah. um, and, uh, and I kicked the penalty, we won the game. And it wasn't that I kicked the penalty and we won the game, it was you turn around and all your mates are running at you, jumping on you, you get a photo in front of the, the scoreboard at the end. Yeah. And I've still got that photo on my wall now. And that's that, for, for a long time, was the pinnacle of mm-hmm. my sporting career. Um, and then obviously, I've had club success, so with Hampstead we were champions of England last year. Yeah. Um, again, with a group of mates, um, it is just so much fun. Almost when you do it with your best mates, it means more. Um, and then um, recently with Wales, um, uh, we're in the European A division, uh, complete underdogs. People didn't think we should have been there. Uh, pretty much went down to the last game. We had to beat Ireland by three goals, I think, to stay up. Yeah. Um, kind of went out with this attitude, what was almost a bit like, you know, what, whatever happens, happens. We'll have a beer afterwards. Um, and we went out 1-4-0. And that for us was like, 
a massive achievement because it was we've been that group of people that group of that squad even of, for about eight years yeah and we've just gone up and up um so that was massive and then i guess personal achievements scoring on, on my great britain debut against australia was was up there in australia um i just gutted we we drew the game and didn't win it because that would yeah. have been a real cherry on the cake and then in terms of role models have you had anyone who's influenced you um along your journey um <laughs> i've got two and they're both from football and they're they're both from arsenal so one is patrick vieira yeah um it's kind of take um no messing attitude get on with it like um also similar to roy Keane in many ways i love i used to love their little battles like to like just want to play football just want to win just want to get on with it and then the other one who i still impersonate today is thierry Henry. Mm -hmm. um i just loved his attacking flair yeah. um almost like the bigger the game the better he got and that's kind of what i want to put into my game um so like even when even when we were at school we were working at school and we did star football Thierry Henry yeah. I only only try and bend it bottom right like open it open it up inside bend it just because of Thierry Henry um but yeah they're they are my role models as such what are we <laughs> the is three non-negotiable behaviors you'd expect from yourself or anybody else you come into contact with um being personable, being um, so that that's like respect everyone for who they are, yeah. um, uh, and if that's on a pitch, you respect them. You don't necessarily have to get on with them, but mm -hmm. you respect them. Um, one of them is max effort mm -hmm. in everything you do. Um, big believer: if you're going to do something, do it properly, or or don't bother doing it. Um, and then the third one is just um, enjoyment, um, especially at this moment in time. Like, yeah. You just gotta enjoy every moment possible because you don't know when we're gonna be <laughs> locked up next or yeah. what's going on. Um, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now if I wasn't enjoying it. Um, and there's definitely days where it's raining, it's cold, and I don't think I'm enjoying it. Yeah. And then you, you 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 sit back and you reflect, and you're like, I'm actually very fortunate to be doing what I am doing. And yeah, so personable effort and enjoyment is. Is hopefully that's what comes across as me as a bloke. And last one for me. Um, if you could yeah. go back to being a twelve-year-old boy at school, maybe it's not put grammar school. Uh, what advice would you give yourself, knowing what you know now? I, I would. Uh, I'd say balance. To find, yeah. find a balance between um, work and and enjoyment in sport. Yeah. I probably didn't work hard enough when I was younger, so I had to <laughs> scramble later on. Yeah. Um, but also um, knowing that like, you don't need to rush into mm -hmm. anything or just take take life as it comes almost. So, for example, like, I'm 27, didn't really start playing professional hockey till I was 20, 25. Yeah. Went a complete roundabout way. Um, so, and that's literally just from doing stuff I enjoy. Yeah. So, um, be, be balanced, um, be adaptable, um, but do stuff you enjoy. Do stuff you enjoy.